Hey guys, you're watching Cutie Crafts. Today I'm going to be trying out a water beads kit sent to me from Bangit.com. If you guys don't know what water beads are, basically they're just like perler beads. They make little pixel art sprites or whatever you call them. And instead of using a hot iron to fuse the bead together like perler beading requires, you just need the spray of water to get the beads to stick together. Water beads are not something completely new. If you remember from 10 years ago, there were these things called pixels or aqua beads. I actually have my Pixos kit from so long ago. This was before I discovered what pearl beading was and this didn't really come with many colors. So once I finished playing with them, I never touched them again. But now I have been given this kit full of many different colors and thanks Banggood for sending this to me. This video isn't sponsored. Banggood always likes to send me some crafts to try out. So I'll give you my honest opinion on this kit and I'm really excited to try out this craft once again. And without further ado, let's get started and take a look at what's inside the kit. The first thing I took a look at was the water beads organizer. It's just like the ones you use for perler beads but it holds only around 100 water beads in each compartment. There are 20 colors with enough shades to make all sorts of projects and the instruction manual is in Chinese but as usual I'm sure we can figure it out. The water beads are spherical and when compared to a perler bead they're around the same diameter which means the sprites will turn out around the same size. Now taking a look at all the included accessories, there's a bag full of keychain materials but I won't be using them for these projects which I will explain later on. There's also a sheet full of some cute designs to try out, two water bead boards to put your design on, one is for square designs and the other for hexagonal ones, a few pattern cards to place under the boards as you are placing the beads on so it can make things a bit easier to follow. More keychain supplies, a spray bottle, a water bead pen to make placing the beads a bit more efficient, and for those who might not be able to get a good grip on a single little water bead. And lastly, this thing, which I had no idea what it was for at the beginning, but I eventually figured it out, and comment down below if you can guess what it does before I show you. For my first water bead sprites, I'm going off of the designs from the kit by placing the templates underneath each of the boards. I use the pen to help place the beads in the right position. It's very simple to use, just fill it up and push the little button on the side to pop the beads out. Since water beads are round and can easily roll away, I found this pen to be very effective at helping me aim the beads to the right position. There are even tweezers included where the end of the tweezer is actually a water bead adjuster that helps you reposition beads in the wrong spot. In total, I'd say I spent around 10 minutes to place the beads onto the boards and that was while I was still getting used to the pen and getting used to how hard it was to pick up an individual water bead. With the designs ready, this is the part where we get to use some dihydrogen monoxide that I filled up in this water sprayer. I gave the beads a few coats of water and I tried to spray it so that all the beads got wet and could stick together. Since this was the first try, I may have overdone it and sprayed too much water. This only made it take longer for the beads to dry and it made me super impatient. I even tried using some tissues to dry the surrounding area to try to make it dry a bit quicker. Once these beads are wet, they will stick tightly onto the board and you won't be able to get it off until it dries. After 10 minutes, the front of the beads was starting to look dry and movable, but really the back of the beads were wet and they just weren't stuck together solidly. But being impatient with this, I decided to get that pink thingy that you may have seen in the beginning. And I used that as a scraper to try to pry the beads off of the board. And yes, that's what I think it should be used for. It didn't say in the instructions particularly, but it worked, kind of. The only problem was that the beads were just not stuck together and I was just ruining it at this point. So I decided to rebond the beads with another spray of water and I set them aside to dry for an hour to make sure that the beads were tightly stuck. I had my boards from a long time ago with me, so for the purpose of not having to wait an hour just for the other sprites to dry, I found a cute pixel Pikachu design online and made that using water beads.
This time, I tried not to overdo the water spraying and I sprayed lightly over everything just enough to cover all the beads without them soaking in it, but also making sure that they were wet enough to stick together. You can tell when you've covered everything when the beads don't fall off the board as you flip it over. And now onto a hexagonal Leonardo pattern that I followed from one of the kit's designs. I have to say that I really like the color selection in this kit. All the beads I used were consistent in quality and I just love vibrant colors. Water beading is basically perler beading but the pixels don't have holes in them and you just use water to fuse them instead of using an iron. I do find that it takes much longer definitely to wait for the finished product since the water needs to evaporate. But that's of course comparing it to perler beads. If someone who has never perler beaded before tried this, I think they can definitely wait and practice their patience. It doesn't take that long to dry if you don't overspray the beads with water, and I'll get into the wait times of these beads very soon. Finally, after waiting an hour, the first sprites I made were dry and the scraper worked like a charm and helped the piece come off of the board without risking any breakage. When it just comes off of the board, it's still damp, so it looks soft and bendable, but once all the water is evaporated, it is pretty firm, but not enough where I would think it's sturdy enough to be a keychain. I feel like the beads can still rip off by accident, especially if they are always moving around, so I would just leave it as a spray or glue it onto a pin instead. Also, to prevent it from bending, I left it under something heavy as it dried. As for this elephant, this was the only one I failed at really badly. It wasn't the peeling from the board that broke it, it was me being dumb that made the sprite go to waste. I thought that, hey, this is like perler beading and you know, I always iron both sides of my perler beads. So I thought, why shouldn't I try spraying water on the other side of the elephant? Big mistake because it made everything wet again and in that flimsy state. So I had to leave it to dry all over again and it actually didn't end up drying that well, and you you'll see. Everything else came out wonderfully. My favorite one is probably this Pikachu. It was the smoothest scrape of them all, and I think it was only about a 20 to 30 minute wait for the beads to dry. This one also came out very flat, and I didn't even need to put anything on top of it, so I wonder what caused it to just go flat on its own. Maybe it depends on the amount of water you put on it, who knows? Also, a cool idea would be to take this and glue it onto a little canvas. I've seen people do that with perler beads, and water beads fit perfectly on them as well, so you could definitely try that out if you ever get some water beads. After getting the hang of this pink scraper tool, I don't see any other way of getting the beads off of the board. The beads are stuck so tightly in those holes that if you used just your fingers, you'd probably be putting a lot of uneven stress onto the beads that may cause them to break or misplace. When I was little, I had to directly peel and kind of pull the beads off of the board, which ultimately caused them to bend horribly, and the scraper is just a really smart tool to include. By the way, it took Leonardo around 20 minutes to dry, 20 to 30, and the little bear was around 10. And once again, if you wanted to turn this into a keychain, all the supplies are there, but I'm just not sure how well it would hold up being thrown around. Update on the elephant, the front part is all dried up, but not the back. Hmm. So to wait for this elephant, I made another hexagonal pattern. This time it's the Mario. That was a design I modified from the kit. I made this one a bit 3D as well by adding a nose piece that I then fused onto Mario using a little spritz of water. In the end, somehow I even lost a few beads on this elephant, but it just became this soggy mess and never dried, and yeah. This was my last desperate attempt at saving it. I tried my best, I sprayed it with water, but I think all the glue disappeared. Goodbye elephant. That was my first attempt at water beading in 10 years, and I'm honestly very happy with the kit overall. 
I think for $15, the amount of supplies and sprites you can make with it, it's pretty worth it. And even my old kit was around that price, and I made barely anything memorable from that. Two main things I'd say to be aware of is number one, do not, I repeat, do not spray both sides, otherwise your sprite will end up just like my elephant. And number two, just like pearl beading, this craft requires a ton of patience. Although it's very relaxing while you are actually making the pattern, know that these simple plastic pieces took a lot of time and effort to create. But most importantly, have fun with it. It's just crafts. You can be creative. Do whatever you want. Alright guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you learned a little something about water beads. It was really fun for me to relive my childhood and play with these again. I never thought I'd see these in the market ever again, but I guess maybe they're trying to bring them back. If you actually want to try out this product yourself, you can always check out the link in the description below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button if you are interested in these kinds of craft videos. And I'll see you guys next time with another cutie craft. Bye!